I thought it was extremely ironic last week when Yellen was testifying before Congress and one of the senators asked, or one of the House representatives, I think she was in the House of Representatives, one of the representatives asked her, do you think that the dollar's power or utility is becoming diminished on a worldwide scale? And her response to me was shocking because she knows the demand for universal trade has to be on a stable, tradable currency. And that's what the dollar is. Very minimal float. Doesn't change its price much. And that's what you need. That's what creates a stable, tradable economy. But Yellen's response was, it is a natural thing to see a diversity within reserve assets in a growing global economy. That makes absolutely no sense. That's like saying, uh, yeah, we all know we like to trade on the stable currency so that we can buy and sell stuff and know exactly what we're going to pay for it. But because we're growing as a nation, we decide we want to start putting more high-floated or variable currencies into our reserve assets. What are you going to do with these reserve assets? Uh, well, it's just there. Why? Oh, we just need them. For what? You're not going to trade with them because they're too variable. You th you're going to make an agreement on the ruble, and today it's worth this much, but tomorrow it could be dropped this much. How are you going to make any trade when it's variable that much? You're not. So you can't use international trade with variable currency. That's why you need a stable. That's why the dollar is so powerful. But she made the assessment that that's what you should naturally expect in a gl growing, diversified global economy. Absolutely insane. So I assumed what this could allude to is that the IMF and the World Bank is making some kind of digital platform where they could initialize a stable coin or a stable currency or reserve currency to replace the dollar. Because if she's alluding, the dollar is not going to really be needed in the future, which is insane. You need something to replace that dollar. And so that's what, that was my conclusion. The only reason she's saying this is to get people acclimated to the idea the dollar is not going to be the reserve currency in the future. Well, I just thought it was ironic that literally three days ago, June 19th, Reuters reported that the IMF is working on a global central bank digital currency platform for all countries to participate under. Isn't that insane and ironic? Yes. <laughs> yeah, to me, it's absolutely insane. You have our Treasury Secretary, the one whose job is to defend the power of the dollar, saying, well, you know, it's normal that the dollar's not nat globally a, a majority. Of. It needs to be diversified. And then literally a week later, you hear the IMF saying, yeah, and we're going to have something that could replace that dollar. Absolutely insane. But so, it'll stabilize it. No, because think about it. it. I mean, this is real simple. You don't have to be an ec economist or into any of that. This is really simple. If the dollar is what everybody uses to trade, because you can bet tomorrow the dollar is going to be worth about the same much value as it was today. That's why you use it, right? If there was an, and that's why all countries use the dollar. If there was another platform, another place where you could globally, all countries could trade, but you don't need the dollar as that stable currency, you could buy this IMF coin and that will be the stable currency. What incentive does any of these countries have to keep holding the dollar? None. That's right. That's what's gangster. That's insane. So what the IMF is imposing literally three days ago is they're creating right now. Wait, three days ago as of? Today, which today is June 22nd. It was June 19th. Ten days ago. No, that, I reported my conspiracy 10 days ago. But yeah. literally five days later, the IMF affirms my conspiracy. And I'm reporting today on the 22nd what was reported on the 19th. 
which is the IMF said verbally, and Routers is reporting, they are currently working with, they are working with multiple platforms. They're working with Amazon. They're working with the Bank of Japan. They're working with the Bank of Italy. They're working with multiple banks to create this digital currency platform. And if this platform gets initialized, like I just explained, there is no real incentive for countries to keep the dollar. Now think about it. The reason why the dollar has so much power right now is because all countries have to hold this dollar. If all these countries have this new platform where they don't need a dollar, what do you think they're going to do the next day? Sell it. And buy what? This IMF, IMF coin. Immediately when they sell their dollars so they could buy this IMF coin, what do you think is going to happen to the U.S. dollar? It's going to have a, an IFM, an indeterminate future manifestation moment. Yeah, it's going to have a dump, a D-U-M-P. <laughs> <laughs> What's that stand for? Dumped. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane because this is real now. This is all real. This isn't hyperbole. It wasn't just, it was my conspiracy about 10 days ago. <laughs> but now it's real. Totally well, it's, it's shocking a, to me. It's a conspiracy still, but the government, like it, it was a conspiracy theory 10 days ago, but now it's a conspiracy. Now it's a, con it's a conspiring agenda that's legitimized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's coming to flourishion and they're verbalizing it. They're Legitimize me, Captain. And it's absolutely insane because that means there is a real plan to get rid of the dollar. Because, you know, we talked about bricks before and we talked about all these things because it was in the spotlight. But the reality is nobody can take the replacement of the dollar stability. The dollar is strong. It's not going anywhere. That's why every country has it. But the IMF has the ability to mitigate that. Now, some of you guys may not know this little hidden thing about the IMF. The IMF is ruled by 24 governing bodies. But if you go to the United States Treasury's website, it will explain to you how these governing bodies work in the IMF. And the reason why is because if you look up who has the majority share, the majority shareholding of the IMF, it's the United States. The United States actually holds most of controlling power in the IMF. Now, isn't that interesting? The IMF could have a means to crash the dollar while at the same time holding all governmental control of the IMF stablecoin. So uh, and it's really strange. It could crash the dollar, but the same country that the dollar represents, the IMF is controlled by. So there is some real intertwined webs here. So you guys can see, you guys have seen it right here. The Treasury, this says it's specifically the United States, this is an official website of the United States. The Treasury website clearly says that the United States has a majority shareholder in the International Monetary Fund. So there is some deep embedded collusion going on. And it seems like there is a high agenda to not to de dollarize, but to say there's no reason for this reserve necessity for the dollar anymore. We can all just have this equal basis of our own individual currency, but we all have to buy the IMF coin. And so, hopefully you guys see where this is leading. Then another thing that came out this week is Japan, which is, I think, the third largest economy in the world, behind China and behind America. Here, it's reported that the Bank of Japan has completed a two-year Proof of concept research into the prospective central bank digital currency has now launched this initiative program. This makes Japan the largest democratic economy in the world to advance the stage of CBDC development. What was interesting to me is this IMF digital platform that they want to create. There was a white paper just written from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and it was in collaboration with guess who? Who? No. No. I'm asking who. No. Amazon. So this is insane. So now we have the IMF, the Bank of Singapore, it's also in collusion with the Bank of Italy and the Bank of Korea. 
with Amazon to create with the IMF this digital platform that all countries can utilize together for international trade. Now, what in the world is Amazon doing with this? They're going to be initializing probably the cloud system with their AWS system and possibly bandwidth and backbone. But they have this thing called the PMB protocol. And this PMB protocol, it says, is designed to work with different ledger technologies and forms of money and enable users to access digital money using wallet providers of their choice with a common protocol. The same infrastructure can be used across multiple use cases. Stakeholders using different wallet providers can transfer digital assets to one another. And so this is not Fugazi. This isn't hyperbole. The technology exists today. It can be accessible today. And the white paper is the technical paper. It's kind of like if somebody wrote a dissertation. So whenever you hear about a white paper, it's basically a company's dissertation on how their technology works. And so if anybody wants to read the white paper on it, it's written by the Monetary Authority of Singapore and the protocol is called the PBM protocol. I'll probably talk about that in some future episodes, but it's happening now and it's uh, coming to flourishing. So the future is now. Well, people have to see that the idea of this global domination 15 minute cities. Last week we talked about smart cities and how that guy was using Amazon Alexa and he got locked out of his own house because they were saying he was using a racist, a racist slur. And before that, we talked about Smart Street and uh, State True. Yeah, well, yeah, BlackRock. Yeah, like, that's one thing I was going to continue talking about. Everybody's making a big brouhaha because BlackRock is now filing for a Bitcoin spot ETF. It's not a future ETF, it's a spot ETF. So it means a spot ETF means that BlackRock literally has to buy or some custody holder has to own these physical Bitcoins. It's not paper Bitcoin. So this is a big deal. But what I was thinking this is, see, because once this came out, Bitcoin price went through the roof again. It shot up. It was at a low. And as soon as this filing got initiated, Bitcoin's price went back up. But... This ain't the first time somebody applied for a Bitcoin spot ETF. And every time they have been applied for, the SEC rejects it. I think this is just another pump and dump manipulation. Now, BlackRock has a reputation. I think they only have had one ETF filing that's been rejected. But I think this just is going to be the best way for a pump and dump because everybody assumes BlackRock's not going to get rejected. So everybody's going to start pumping all their money in. Because if this really goes through, that means BlackRock's going to buy a lot of Bitcoin. And the more they buy of Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin is going to go up. So the idea is you better get in now. And you see what I'm saying? You can see how this is working. So you better get in now because BlackRock's going to guarantee Bitcoin to go through the roof. But what if the SEC rejects the filing? There's nothing BlackRock can do. And immediately, what do you think is going to happen? The Bitcoin price is going to tank. Because right now, who do you think is pumping up Bitcoin? It's BlackRock. Right now, BlackRock is buying Bitcoin to artificially pump up the price so you can start getting into the hype and buy more Bitcoin. Because now you see the price going up. So your mind is thinking, oh, Bitcoin's going to go through the roof because BlackRock's going to make sure it happens. BlackRock, BlackRock's BlackRock. But all it takes is for the SEC to say, denied. And before the SEC denies it, who do you think is going to know it's going to get denied? BlackRock. So who do you think is going to sell the Bitcoin before the denial? BlackRock. And then all of a sudden, a week before the approval comes out, you're going to see the Bitcoin price get dumped because BlackRock's going to sell it. But everybody's going to think, you're going to hear all the news say, this is a buying opportunity, guys. Look, this is your last chance to get in before Bitcoin goes through the roof. And and they, every- that's what they did already. And a lot of people got in and then it dumped. That's right. And but this is this is gonna be the I think one of the biggest pump and dumps ever because it's black rock. And so everybody's gonna get in. I even think banks and institutions are gonna get in. And then BlackRock is gonna toilet on you. And so this is what I think is interesting. And the reason why I think this is correlated is because Bitcoin needs to get abrogated. It, yeah, it needs to lose its validity so that these IMF digital currency platforms can say, see, we are trustable 
You can't trust Bitcoin. You can't trust Ethereum. You can't trust none of it. We have to control this market. Yeah. Well, the last thing I wanted to bring out, concluding my whole premise here, is yesterday, Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve Chair, he was in front of Congress testifying, and he told, they were asking him, what do you think stable coins play as a form of money? And Powell makes it very clear. He thinks that they are a form of money, and they are important, and that they need to be regulated by the government. Um, we do see payment stable coins as a form of money, uh, and in all advanced economies, the ultimate source of credibility in money is the central bank. And we believe that uh, it would be appropriate to have a quite a robust federal role in, in what, what, what happens in stable coins going forward and that leaving us with a weak role and allowing a lot of private money creation at the state level would be a mistake. So basically he's saying we shouldn't give the state the power to create money like that. That should be left to the federal government. And so I think it's interesting. He knows the power that's going on and he knows what's about to happen if the states get that power themselves so anyways this is big it's going everywhere the platforms are getting built the idea of stable coins are being initially initialized it's all happening right now and i say within the next 18 months you're going to see something insane insane pilot programs are going to come to an end they're going to initialize actual cbdc functionality and the beginning of the digital concentrational isolation is going to begin. And you guys are all will see what happens when you allow governments to be your religious dictator. Because they're the ones that are telling you what to do, when to do it, and you're giving them free access because you want some kind of nationalized convenience. There is a beauty of convenience in all of that. But at the same time, you lose your personal sovereignty. Because once everything goes digital, it's programmable. That's the hard thing, I think, for people to understand. This money is programmable. If they say, hey, hey, a host, we think you need to go on a diet. <clears throat> we are not going to allow you to buy XYZ food. All my allocated money is now on a digital wallet. All my money now is programmed to not able to buy certain foods. Hey, uh, colleague, we don't want you to buy coffee no more. You can't because your money won't transact coffee anymore. Yeah, I'll just have one of my friends buy and I'll drink their coffee. Sure, sure. And so at some point, this is going to get widespread. But that's individual programming. What if it's regional programming? If you go outside of your state, your money doesn't work. Uh, think about Utah. It's like, we don't want you guys to buy alcohol anymore. And yeah, they wouldn't be able to. It's anything. You can, your money won't even work outside of your state. Your money won't work out of your country. Yeah. Your money won't work anywhere unless they say so. Your money's not going to work out of your hand. So this is the end result of allowing a government to have digital control over you. So anyways, I just want you guys to see this is happening now. This is not hyperbole. All those conspiracies are coming to flourishing. They are publicly announcing this is what's happening. So I just want you guys to be ready for it. We've been talking about this for over a year. And now we are seeing it. And it's only 12 months in. Another 12 months from now. And we're probably going to actually see utility at that point. So 2024. Let's see what happens. Honestly, I don't know how we are going to, I don't know if there's a way to stop this because now it's on a global scale. Like we're talking about the IMF and the World Bank and all countries are utilizing this. So it's something we're just going to have to prepare for. You guys tell us in the comments, what do you think we should do? And what do you think about Mussolini? It's a lot easier if it's isolated to a country, but if it goes to a global stance like the IMF, that gets really difficult. So tell us in the comments. What do we you think? Are, we're calling out to the resistance. Yeah, tell us in the comments. Tell us what you think we should do as a nation, we should do as a people.
the things that we talk about on here, it seems like it's a big conspiracy, but it's just simple pattern recognition. At some point, what people say, it, it means something. These guys are puppets, so they're being controlled by some string, and that string is premeditated. So it's not like these things are arbitrary.